I fully agree. So let's jump right into this game, ladies and gentlemen. As down to the bottom right hand corner, we do have our Teal Zerg. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Rocks Kit Slivko. And in the top right, hailing from Australia, it's going to be Moonblade. So, coming back to those little control tidbits that you were talking about, Rokska Slivko had a pretty good run through the Russian Federation Nationals for the WCS. Uh, the only problem where he really kind of fell short was actually falling down into that lower bracket and then eventually being defeated by uh, Rokska's Titan, his teammate. Uh, now, what was really, really evident going into that series, particularly, yes, it's not ZVZ, but, you know, all of these translate since it's the same game of StarCraft 2. Yeah. Uh, his, his control, his micro, is nowhere near as strong as his macro. And this is something that I was talking to about Empire Cast earlier on. Uh, and, you know, his real strength for Slipko really does lie in that macro game. But he's still, I mean, this in ZVZ, you can still get into the swing of things with that as well if you're able to apply that good defense early on. And I mean, it looks like Slipko is going to be having to test his micro right away. Yeah. Because he's going to be in a 15 pool situation versus the 10 pool of Moonblade. We did see Nest T do this little maneuver the other day, but uh, in Nest T's position, he was scouting early on, making sure his opponent was not early expanding. And since he spotted that, we actually saw Nest T go for the Queen M3 drones instead. Moonblade, yeah. on the other hand, is going to run headlong into a bunch of Zerglings right at the start. Slivko is throwing down his expansion, so a little bit more of a defensive play coming out of Slivko. But gosh, look at this. Moonblade's making up to eight Zerglings huh. now. Yeah, I really liked the way in which Nesty adapted himself there. He used the drone scout to be able to know exactly if he was going to be able to do the damage against some kind of hatch first build. Uh, now, Moonblade is going to move across the map here, getting quite aggressive. Uh, but again, the spawning pool for Slipko is down at a really, really ample time here. Gas is going to be on the way as well, so he's not really going to fall behind in any kind of like speed race. Uh, and I don't really see this doing too much damage unless, of course, he gets really, really lucky. Well, it looks like Moonblade might just go ahead and target this directly. Look at this great position. Positioning Moonblade can then make a nice arc to pick off any units that try to come down the ramp. Already we're seeing six Zerglings in production from Slivko, but they're not quite out yet. There's Zergling uh, number eight, and oh my god, Moonblade. Uh, Moonblade's actually going to be able to take this uh, out. What a play. And there Moonblade takes down the hatchery, and Slivko loses the drone as well. Wow, Slipko's Zergling production was really, really late there. Lava Jet goes down for Slipko here to be able to continue his macro going, but Moonblade getting a cancel on that hatchery, it's not massive, but it is a big deal considering that Moonglad right now going to be retreating back, still has his gas on the way here, uh, and hasn't taken his hatch just yet, actually. Banely nest planting for Slivko. He's going to be doing the very, very defensive setup where he's not even going to be getting speed yet. Moonglade, on the other hand, his intentions are clear. Zergling speed already down, and knowing Moonglade, he'll likely be throwing down a Banely nest and just going for a one ah. base uh, play. He's yeah. trying to barrel his opponent to death. There's the Baneling Nest. Here's the round of Zergling production. And in the most old school fashion ever, I think we're actually going to have a one base Zerg versus yeah. an early expander. Yeah, it's, it's more often than not now with, that we do see ZVZ go into those macro conditions. And just to give you a little bit of background on what Slipko actually had to do to reach this position that he finds himself in for the Intel Extreme Masters, he was able to take out... Uh, he actually got invited to the Stage 2 of the European Qualifier, uh, and from there on he beat a flurry of players. But coming to ZVZ, he was able to take a series of Nurcio, Vortex, and Lelush. Three Zerg players that are phenomenally strong in this, this matchup. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, it really does show testament to how well Slivko can play this matchup. Slivko is going to need to be super careful. He does have three in his extractor. So he will be able to replenish those Banelings if need be. There's no spine crawler down yet. And here's going to come Moonblade's huge surprise. He's going to be moving in with a huge number of Ling Baneling. Spreading into the front. There's that first Zergling leading. He's going to spot these two. No, actually won't spot the, the Banelings. And right now, Slivko knows something's up. That's a very early speed. Uh, well, there's been a potential huge misstep here by Slipko. He hasn't really had much scouting at the front of his opponent's base. His overall wasn't positioned very well. As such, these Bailing is going to waddle in here, trying to find some damage potential that they can find, but not really getting wow. too much. Wow! Slipko controlled that absolutely perfectly. Taking almost no damage, trying to run in. I mean, in the unit's lost tab, it is just 
a terrible spot for Moonglade right now. Moonglade is going to have to commit to this attack right now. Yeah, he's still going to produce um, way more Zerglings on the way here. Baneling's going to be morphing in as well once again. We have defensive Baneling's morphing in for Slivko as well. He's trying to get that spine crawl up. If he can get that, it's going to be so much more easier to be able to deal with these Banelings. But so many Zerglings. Oh. Not again. Getting caught by a few oh. Banelings on the ramp. They're connecting massively as Slivko will be able to clean this up for now. Losing maybe one or two drones, but still really nice defense here by Slivko. Oh, Slivko just did exactly what he needed to do. The Banelings on the ramp decimated everything. Moonglade was hoping that there was just a single Baneling on the top of the ramp, but there were two, and he lost almost every single one of those units. That was just such a tragic misstep by, by Moonglade. And now Slivko has the Lava advantage. He has the Queen advantage. Well, actually, he will have the Queen advantage once these, uh, because he has the two hatcheries up and running here. So for now, Moonglade having to play catch up. He does have a wave of drones on the way to be able to try and catch up to the 33 drones to the current 23 drones that he finds himself at here. And trying to poke forwards a little bit, but not really getting too much done at this point. Slivko has essentially won this game, and I think that he's doing the, the best decision he, he, he can at this point. He's going to be going for the Roach Warren. Uh -huh. He'll be able to get the fast Roach speed. Does he have three geysers up or four? Nope, looks like just three. So doing a standard Roach speed attack timing will just crush Moonglade's front. But, I mean, let's be honest, anything Slivko does at this point is going to get him the win. Just look at that unit's kill tab. 38 oh. units killed off. In the worker tab, Ooh. 38 to Slivko. Just had a lone Baneling connection there on a few Zerglings at the ramp here of Moonglade. He is throwing up a Spine Crawler to try and ward him against some kind of aggression, but you're, you were right in your assessment. Completely right. Uh, Slipko has established himself such a good economy early on in this ZVZ that it's very, very difficult without being able to really do some damage uh, to be able to actually catch up here once that Roach count begins to rise. I love watching Zerg versus Zerg nowadays because of the third base predominance in this matchup. You see Moonglade snuck in. Picked that off, denied that expansion. Yeah. Slivko is just going to be adding on more and more and more and more drones. I think Moonglade's only option is to do something massive with either Spire Tech or Investor Tech. If he tries to go down the Roach route, he will find himself sorely far behind. Would much so anticipate Moonglade to do a Spire transition, though. Yeah, and in essence, again, Ohana is a very, very good map for that kind of thing. We spoke about it a little bit before with Loli's uh, style in ZVZ, uh, and there's so much counter-attack potential on this map because of how really wide open the map is in general. So uh, that would be a pretty cool thing to see out of Moonglade here to try and claw himself back into this. He does have a, another wave of drones on the way to be able to take him actually a little bit ahead of wow, Slivko in really? just a sec. Uh, but again, he doesn't. he's not going to have that much lava and his army cost right now is not looking anywhere near as good as Slipko's. Looks like Moonglade is going to try to answer by going for mass spine, mass drone. No doubt this is going to transition into Spire. Mm. If he does try to go in Fester, that would be kind of an odd choice. It's going to be quite a weak play. Won't be able to do there much. There's the Spire going down. Slipko's getting ever closer oh. to being able to spot that. And he's going to miss it. Oh, no, there he is. Yeah. And meanwhile, we have the Zerglings actually putting on some pressure here at the third, trying to micro back as best he can to be able to avoid the damage from these roaches. Does get away, though, with that, but unfortunately does not force the cancellation on that hatchery, and that's exactly what the kind of move that Moonglade would want to be able to execute here to bring him back into this. Uh, but again, he's going to be relying on kind of the surprise factor, but it's in essence, almost already gone after having that Spire scouted out very nicely there by the Overseer. I mean, this is just really dangerous. If I go to the Army <laughs> Supply tab to see the 67 mm. Army Supply, and right now Moonblade uh -huh. is desperately trying to add on yet four more Spine Crawlers. There's another hatch going down, a smart play by Moonblade, uh. but he's making this play because he's far behind. There's odd risks you have to take to be able to get in an edge in these positions, and amazingly, these three Zerglings, no. <laughs> it's going to be like, oh my god, three Zerglings take this down. That would be a terrible story. That would us for now. Slivko actually going to uh -oh. be moving up into the spine crawl. the Banelings all rush right down the front, and ooh, excellent micro there by Moonglade, trying to stay alive as long as possible, trying to connect with anything that he can. Does do an incredible detonation on those roaches, but the fact of the matter is Slivko just has far too many ground units. The front gets absolutely decimated. Eight Mutalists in production, but Slivko has plenty of roaches 12 hanging down at the front of Moonblade. Yeah, by the time those mutalists actually end up popping in, trying to kill off these roaches, the roaches are already going to have done their job anyway. More spine crawlers on the way, but the hatchery will end up falling here for Moonglade. And right now, Slipco looking to seal the deal here in the main. Mutalists out, but can't really do anything against that <laughs> ground armor default by Slipco. Killing off as much as he can, but the roaches just slowly trickling away at that layer. 
And it does have Atri still on the way down to the southern position from his main here. But once that layer goes down, I mean, his economy right now is crippled in comparison to Slipko's anyway. Slipko really showing the one of the great, great reasons he is so good in this matchup. Able to take those defensive positions quite nicely. It doesn't rely on too much micro because you just put Banelings at the top of your ramp and kaboom kabar. If your opponent actually takes it for extensive game, then don't have